Good morning students. I am Prakash Tripathi and today I am going to teach you the second chapter of your book Flamingo. The name of the lesson is Lost Spring Stories of Stolen Childhood. As you can see I have written something on the board. The author of the lesson is Anish Jung and the main character in this story is Saheb whose name is Saheb -e Alam. He is a rag picker and he lives at Sima Puri. Sima Puri is a settlement of rag pickers at the outskirt of Delhi. So this is the place where these rag pickers are living in this story. And the people living in Sima Puri are the Bangladeshi refugees. They have come from Bangladesh and they have settled there illegally. And the survival in Sima Puri means rag picking. If you have to survive in Simapuri, the only thing these uh, people could do was rag picking. 10,000 uh, people were involved in rag pickings. And uh, the rag pickers of Simapuri live in a structure of mud. These things we can discuss later on when we come across while reading the read, uh, chapter. Now let us discuss the title. Lost spring. Spring is considered to be one of the best season. In fact, it is the queen of the season. And then the narrator, uh, writer says, stories of stolen childhood. You know, there are millions of children in India who instead of going to school, who instead of spending their time in playground, are busy working in hazardous industries. They are involved in rag pickings and some other a hazardous job. So, the childhood of these children are stolen. Matlab, they are away from this beautiful period of their life. The childhood is the most beautiful period of life in everybody's life. And this childhood is stolen from them. Matlab, they are not able to get proper education. They are involved in uh, some child labor. So basically the lesson focuses on the theme of child labor. When the lesson starts, the narrator encounters with a rag picker as I already told you, Sahib -e Alam. And the narrator asks him, why do you do this? The narrator simply asks that boy and the boy is busy scrounging the go for gold in the garbage dumps. Scrounging means searching. That boy was searching for something in the garbage dumps. Garbage dumps means heap of rubbish, which was in the neighborhood of the narrator. Now the boy tells the narrator that he had come from Bangladesh, as her mother, as his mother has told him. The narrator comes to know that they had beautiful houses in the Bangladesh. There were many storms that swept away their fields and homes. There were many storms. They lost their homes due to the storm. And they left Bangladesh. And they came and settled at Simapuri, which is at the outskirt of Delhi, for some livelihood. The narrator says, um, Why do you do this? The boy said, I have nothing else to do. Then the narrator says, why don't you go to school? And when the narrator said this, she herself realized that this question was very hollow. There was no sense. Actually, she had said in a very lighter sense that why are you not going to school? The boy who is involved in the job of picking rubbish cannot go to school. But the narrator asked that question. The boy said, there is no school in my neighborhood. When it opens, I will go. Then the narrator says, if I open a school, will you come? He said, okay, I will come. After some days, the narrator again encounters the same boy. And the boy came running to her. Uh, Is your school ready? I want to take admission. And then the narrator feels very embarrassed. She is really uh, ashamed that she had asked a senseless question for that boy to go to school. And then the uh, author says, the name of the boy is Sahib -e Alam. Sahib -e Alam means the Lord of the Universe. And if that boy comes to know the real meaning of his name, then he would really wonder that am I Lord of Universe? 
Then the narrator says that she encounters many such children on the street daily. In fact, an army of bare feet boys who appears like morning birds and disappear at noon. These children come in the morning. They pick up some rags, um, rubbish from the dump, and they disappear in the noon. When she asks one boy, "Why are you not wearing slippers?" the boy says that my mother doesn't give me. She always keeps the shoes on the shelf. Then the other boy says, "No, he is telling lie. Even if his mother gives him to wear the footwear, he would not wear." The narrator wonders here that is this an excuse? that they want to show to the narrator or everyone that they are always in a perpetual state of poverty but she thinks that it is not a tradition they wants to hide their um, poverty or wants to make an excuse then she is reminded of a story from udipi once was told to her as a young boy he would go to school past an old temple there is a boy who is the son of a priest he was without slipper and he used to pray before the goddess that i want a pair of shoes then the narrator again says that after 30 years some situation has changed again there is a boy who is also a son of a priest but this time he has a pair of shoes in his uh, feet let me never lose them and the boy is praying let me never lose them the goddess had granted her parent her prayer his prayer young boys like the son of the priest now wore shoes the narrator says that there are many students who are wearing shoes but one thing she says that the prayer of this child has been granted but there are still many boys and girls who are without feet now the acquaintance of narrator with the sahib e alam takes her to the sima puri now i want to describe uh, one question can come describe the life of people living in sima puri as i have written here the rag pickers of sima puri live in structures of mud structures of mud with roof of tin and tarpaulin so they have a very temporary and ordinary house you can say there is no sewage there is no sewage drainage or running water facility in the colony matlab they are devoid of all the basic amenities women are living in a tattered sari and they says that if at the end of the day we can feed our families and go to bed without an aching stomach we would rather live here than in the field that give us no grain they don't regret that they have left their place in bangladesh they are happy because they are getting something to eat here and survival in sima puri means picking rags and um, it has acquired the proportion of a fine art they are now expert in picking the rubbish from garbage of dumps the narrator is told by sahib e alam that sometimes he found her 10 rupees note the children are happy that sometimes they can get a big amount of rupees and one day the narrator sees sahib e alam watching a game uh, to uh, at a lawn uh, it's a game of uh, lawn tennis and he is wearing a pair of shoes which is broken which is a, which has a hole in it but sahib e alam is happy to wear that shoes After few days, the narrator encounters Sahib e Alam again, and he is working in a milk booth at the tea stall. He is getting eight hundred rupees per month to time meal, but Sahib e Alam is not happy, as earlier he was. Earlier he was very happy because he was the master of his own. Now he is not so happy, though he is getting some money because the bag was his. Now the the steel canister which he is holding in his hand is not his own he ha- he has lost that carefree look so the narrator wants to say when he was a rag picker he was happy now he is working at a tea stall but that carefree look has disappeared from his face but 
here this first part of the lesson ends i will discuss you the second part i want to drive a car next time in the next video till then have a good day